In previous sections of this lesson, we looked at how a magnetic field can be created when an electric current is passed through an electrical conductor, such as a piece of wire. We then call this an electromagnet. But we can, in fact, get the reverse of this effect if we then move a magnetic field across a piece of wire or across other conductors. Because when we do move a magnetic field, it then creates an electric current in the wire. So, what is actually happening to enable electricity to be created? Well, if we again regard the electrons as behaving like miniature magnets, then in very simple terms, when we move a magnetic field across the wire, it attracts the electrons and forces them to move, which is much the same as having two permanent magnets, where by physically moving one magnet, it will attract the other magnet, thus making it move. So by moving a magnet and its magnetic field across a wire as shown in this example, the moving magnetic field causes the electrons to move along the wire, thus creating a flow of electrons, which again is a flow of electricity. One important thing to note is that it doesn't matter whether it is the magnetic field that is moving or whether it is the piece of wire that is moving. As long as the magnetic field is moving relative to the piece of wire, of course, if both the magnetic field and the piece of wire are stationary, then there would be no relative movement between the electrons in the wire and the magnetic field. So the magnetic field will not cause the electrons to move, and there would be no flow of electricity. And also note that in the example, the magnet is moving left to right, and it has caused the electrons to also flow from left to right. But if the magnet was being moved from right to left, then the electrons would then also flow from right to left. So the direction or the way in which the magnetic field moves or cuts across the wire will dictate which direction the electrons flow. And this means it will also dictate the direction of electrical current flow. Therefore, if the current flow changes direction, then the positive and negative ends of the wire will swap positions, which is a reversal of the electrical polarity. So, depending on which way the magnet is moved, it will dictate the direction of current flow and which end of the wire is positive and which end is negative. Also note that the faster the magnet is moved, then the faster the electrons will move through the wire, which will then increase the electrical energy being created in the wire. This illustration shows a simple example of a piece of wire passing through a magnetic field that exists between the unlike poles of the two permanent magnets. The movement of the wire through the magnetic field causes the electrons to move, which then results in a current and voltage being created across the two ends of the wire. And again, it doesn't matter whether it is the magnetic field or the wire that moves as long as there is relative movement between the magnetic field and the wire, so that the magnetic field cuts across the wire in some way. Now, in reality, a current cannot actually flow through the wire unless the two ends of the wire are joined together or they are connected using an electrical consumer, such as a light bulb. And this is because the electrons cannot flow unless new electrons can pass into the wire at one end and existing electrons need somewhere to flow to at the other end. However, a voltmeter is able to detect the electrical pressure or voltage in the wire, which is the potential voltage. This is in fact no different to measuring the voltage available in a battery when it is disconnected from any circuits. There is no current flow, but there is available or potential voltage. By looking at the two examples, there is then one interesting thing to note, and that is, when the wire is moved upwards through the magnetic field, as shown in the example, the right-hand end of the wire is positive, and the left-hand end is negative. But when the wire is then moved downward, as shown in the example, the electrical polarity reverses, so positive and negative now swap ends. And this is because the relative movement of the magnetic field and the wire has reversed. 
Now again, the example shows that a voltage is being created of 0.5 volts. And this is when the wire is moving upward. The voltmeter then shows a positive voltage of plus 0.5 volts. But when the wire is moving downward in the reverse direction, the positive and negative positions have now been reversed. And the voltmeter is therefore now showing a negative voltage of minus 0.5 volts. The important thing to therefore note is that the direction that the wire cuts across the magnetic field will dictate which end of the wire is positive and which end is negative. Before moving on to the next sections, we should briefly summarize some of the important things that we have so far mentioned. Now first, when a magnetic field cuts across a conductor, such as a piece of wire, it can cause electrons to move, thus creating a flow of electrons, which is a flow of electricity. And then, if the magnetic field and the wire are stationary, then there is no relative movement between the magnetic field and the electrons. So there will be no movement of electrons, and therefore no electric current. And finally, the direction of relative movement between the magnetic field and the wire will dictate which direction the electrons flow. And therefore, it will dictate which direction the electric current will flow. And this means that the direction of relative movement between the wire and the magnetic field will also dictate which end of the wire is positive or negative. And there is one other important thing to note, and that is that if the wire is moved more quickly, this means that the relative movement between the magnetic field and the electrons in the wire is also faster. And this causes the electrons to move more quickly, thus producing an increase in the current flow and the voltage. If the wire was therefore moving more quickly, then the voltage reading shown in our example would be higher. So having now established how an electric current can be produced, we should of course then make use of the correct terminology. And when a magnetic field moves or cuts across a piece of wire or conductor to create an electric current, we do tend to use the term generating electricity. But this process of creating an electric current by relative movement of a magnetic field and a conductor is in fact known as inducing a current or voltage, which we are going to look at in more detail in the following sections.